Now this is the story all about how a peaceful Māori settlement was raided by government troops. You've heard the name Parihaka. You know the name Parihaka. On November 5th, 1881, 1,600 troops invaded the Taranaki settlement of Parihaka, a place that had come to symbolise peaceful resistance to the confiscation of Māori land. The story of Parihaka is more than just that one fateful day. It's part of a larger kōrero about Taranaki, the New Zealand wars, and land theft in Aotearoa. After the first Taranaki War in 1860, the New Zealand Parliament introduced the New Zealand Settlements Act, which meant that they could confiscate Māori land to punish iwi that were deemed to have rebelled against Her Majesty's authority. They also introduced the Suppression of Rebellion Act, which meant that any Māori fighting against British forces could be arrested and detained without trial indefinitely. Now, I'm no lawyer, but I object on the grounds of massive stigma. Under this act, 1.2 million acres of Taranaki land was eventually confiscated, and a lot of it was handed out to European settlers and troops that had fought in the wars. But heaps of those troops didn't stick around. So, the peaceful village of Parihaka was established on unoccupied but confiscated land around 1866 by the Māori leaders Te Whiti o Rongomai and Tohu Kākahi. Let me tell you a little bit about these two. Their descendants believe Te Whiti was identified early on in his life as having a special authority in teaching and prophecy. And his relative, Tohu, was thought to have the same gift. Some descendants believe in an ancient prophecy foretelling the appearance of two birds of knowledge appearing on the peak of Taranaki. We've had heaps of prophets in our history, eh? Po te tau te whero whero, the first Māori king, Tafiao, his son, te kōti ariki rangi of the Ringatū movement, rua kenana of maunga pōhatu, mere riki riki, the kuia of Ngāti Apa, and William Tahu Pōtiki Ratana of the Ratana movement, just to name a few. So anyway, Māori who'd lost land were forced to relocate, and many of them were attracted to the sanctuary offered at Parihaka. There, Tohu and Te taught their followers about resisting land confiscation, but only through peaceful resistance, just like Gandhi and Martin Luther King many years later. You could call them the OGs of turning the other cheek. When the government surveys came and started to carve up the land in the Waimate Plains, just southeast of Parihaka, Tohu and Te sent men out to pull up the surveyors' pegs and plough the lands in protest. Like, take that land, surveyors. I'm going to plough the land and plant some kumara all up in your business. The thing is, not only did they kind of think that the confiscated land had been returned to Māori because it had been unoccupied for so long, also the government had not made any plans for the reservations of land that they had promised to Taranaki Māori when they confiscated the land in the first place. So many of Tohu and Te Whiti's followers were arrested for ploughing. That's right, ploughing and they were sent off to prison in the South Island. Throughout the West Coast, communities that were getting smaller and poorer continued to make the trek to Parihaka, and the campaign of protest and ploughing continued. All of this not getting what they want tended to make the crown a bit hoha, and so the native minister, John Bryce, decided it was time to take things by force. Like, why is he native minister? To be honest, he doesn't sound like a native. He doesn't sound like he cares that much about the natives. In fact, a few years earlier, he set some troops on a group of 10 and 12 year old Māori boys and killed a couple of them. What a dick. On November 5th, 1881, 1600 armed constabulary and volunteer troops surrounded Parihaka. The 2000 inhabitants offered no resistance. In fact, they sent children out to greet them with food and with songs. Tohu and Te Whiti were arrested along with many of their followers. And over the next few weeks, the rest of the residents were evicted, their houses destroyed, and sadly, many of the women experienced terrible things at the hands of the troops. Tori and Tefiti were arrested and charged with wickedly, maliciously, and seditiously contriving and intending to disturb the peace. What? They were imprisoned in New Plymouth and then in Christchurch, and then sort of paraded around the South Island for six months to be shown all the amazing achievements of British colonisation. Weird, but true. They continued to ask for a fair trial, but were never given one. 
Two years later, they were allowed to return home to Parihaka, still destroyed from the invasion. There, they continued their campaign of protest through ploughing confiscated land. Tohu died in 1907, and it's said that Te Whiti mourned his death right up until the day that he died, only 11 months later. So fast forward to June 2017, and then Attorney General Chris Finlayson gave an apology on behalf of the Crown to Taranaki for the treatment of those at Parihaka. He acknowledged the men, women and children that responded to the tyranny of the Crown with dignity, discipline and immense courage. Even here in Aotearoa, we learn about amazing leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Mahatma Gandhi. And I think Tohu and Tefiti should also be household names. I also think November 5th should be changed to commemorate Parihaka instead of Guy Fawkes. What do you think? Let us know and comment down below. Ka kiteo, kia koutou katoa, Aotearoa marama. We'll see you next month for another episode of Kaupapa on the Couch.